this was because I do like the form factor of it for a empty. Hi folks, welcome to another episode of the Art of Engineering. In today's episode, we are going to look at the construction of a QRP Labs kit, the QCX Plus. And this is a special project of mine. It's part one of project 160 meters. And that's basically an attempt to get myself on the 160 meter band. And here is the kit here. As you can see, it's not a massive kit. It fits on the palm of my hand. It's certainly not as small as the QCX Mini. And I actually bought a QCX Mini and my mate VK2NAP has that in his hospital because I really managed to do a pretty darn good job of destroying the circuit board. But he's um, quite confident that he'll be able to get it going. So hopefully we'll be seeing that in a future video. At any rate, the reason why I got this was because I do like the form factor of it for a, an in-shack rig. And once it arrived, I started thinking to myself, by the time you get your QCX Mini, which is probably less than half the size of this, this rig here, maybe even quarter the size, by the time you add your speaker, if you want an external speaker and uh, the battery, etc., etc., you've got quite a bit of gear. And what I was thinking was, this rig here has quite a bit of room inside the case and I imagine that you could probably if you find a smaller battery pack get a battery in here and maybe even a small speaker with the battery in which case the rig would be totally self-contained and that would be a fun little project to have a go at and if you're not a fan of the QCX Mini because it's so small and because it needs to be constructed so precisely it's a lot more rigorous a construction than the QCX plus this is great because it has all through hole components or basically um, all through hole components I think there's one or two surface mounts that are already installed on the board but the rest are your garden variety through hole components making the construction a lot easier and I am just really happy with the way this rig looks now I know that we now have the QMX and he must be selling that thing gangbusters at the moment. It's a multi-band rig. It's soon to be adjusted so that it'll do SSB as well. And I'm certainly going to order one of those in the future. But I am a real fan of single band rigs. And I really do love the way this rig looks. And um, I'm hoping I'm going to love the way that it performs. I don't know about you, but I really love it when stuff arrives in the mail. It's quite addictive. Uh, this is stuff that I ordered from Mini Kits quite a while ago. And uh, we have this little box here. This is going to be part of Project 160. We're actually going to put relays and whatnot in that to switch out the ballon. And I ordered these. They're actually cores, uh, FD240-43 uh, cores for common mode chokes and that sort of thing and making ballons. And I've got a couple of those. And we also ordered two of these Peel 259 to uh, BNC adapters because uh, I needed two of those to go on the back of the power meter. I was sick of stealing them off the back of the SDR switch, having to disassemble the shack every time I want to do something. Here's a um, T200-2 times 2 cores. There's a couple of cores there as well. I can't remember what I ordered those for. And I'm just going to make sure I don't leave any stuff in here. It's... Um, it was a bit of a disaster if uh, we throw away parts. And there you have it, folks. This is the QCX Plus 5 watts, 57.79 or 58 bucks US, which equates to about 88 Australian dollars. I don't know how he does it. The kits are so cheap and it's such high quality. And we are ready to test. And we are going to use the inbuilt test equipment. So that's the other thing that's amazing about Han Summers. He's just so innovative with his designs. You can pretty much align this thing with very little uh, equipment because all the testing uh, regime or equipment is built into the design. And I'll, I'll quickly show you that as I go through this process. I haven't gone over the build very much because if you look at the instructions, which I'll show you shortly, it is almost idiot proof. Almost, I say. Please pardon the hand carried filming. Uh, this is the instruction manual. And as you can see, it is very very detailed 
and every single step of the process is indicated on the circuit board. So as you proceed through, it tells you what parts you should have, how to wind toroids, and each part you put in, you can see there, is designated in red. So it's pretty hard to miss a part. So hopefully when I switch this thing on, it comes on. And we have finished the build. And this is our test setup. So we have the uh, QCX ready to switch on, hopefully. Hopefully no smoke comes out, <laughs> like it always does. And this is the um, AV 1000 meter. And this is our dummy load, our homebrew dummy load, which you've seen in previous videos. And at the back here, over here, we have our switch mode power supply. Now you can see that big uh, toroid sticking out the front. That is actually a noise quieting or noise suppression on that supply. Care of Drew Diamond, also a video in the playlist on my ham radio channel. Now let's switch on the supply and see if we get anything happening. Turbines to speed. Well, that's always a good sign. And it's gone straight into the 160 meter mode. I'm assuming that's the uh, correct software. I'm imagining that he doesn't sell a lot of 160 meter versions of this because um, it's not the most popular band. Now, as you can see here, uh, the alignment instructions are as detailed, if not more detailed than the actual assembly instructions. And it says here we need to press the select button, which is this one here, which is actually a key, a PTT and menu. And it says to hold it down, adjusting the bandpass trimmer. And that's the first adjustment. So let's have a crack and see if that works. Okay, one long press to the, uh, yep, we get into the first mode, preset. Um, and then it says to go to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, alignment. Now press the select button to enter the alignment menu. And that's on align. Now turn the rotary encoder until you see 8.7 peak BPF. Press select. Seven peak BPF band pass filter. And then we're going to hit select. And it says there, if you've got headphones in, make sure you haven't got them in because it's going to be a very loud tone. So you can see here, the test equipment's built in. Now, I'm not going to go through this whole process with you. I might quickly show you how, the, how this peaks up, but uh, you know, this would make a very long and boring video. And uh, I've been told to stop blabbering so much. So please, in the comment section below, um, do you like the blabber? Or you dislike the blabber. Now, a lot of people go, get to the build! But um, how amusing is that for me? Not at all. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I need to um, uh, be a bit more succinct on the actual build and, um, and then have the blabber elsewhere in the video so you can fast forward to the juicy bits. And that is the first um, step. You just adjust a little pot in here. Ideally, I would have an insulated screwdriver, but... Uh, I've stepped back from it and uh, we've picked our bandpass filter. So that's exciting, first step done. Now, we've adjusted our peak bandpass filter level and we're now going to our IQ balance. You might notice there that uh, that's decidedly lower, but that's because I've adjusted my volume here because if it's hitting 12, Apparently the op amps are being driven too far and you can't actually see the adjustments happening because it's being clipped. So we've set it to 10 and we now adjust our pot. And this adjustment is not looking for a peak. It is looking for a dip. Down. Oh. Now is that going up because it's going into a new... Yes, still going down. Because it adjusts the um, scale as well at certain points in the adjustment phase. You've got to read all of this in the manual. So that's about there. We're just going to fire it up and see whether it's going to behave itself or not. Fingers crossed. It 
tuned up 1820 test set up and we've got our high mount key connected to it to see if uh, we get anything out of it there we go exactly five watts They're very nice let's um fire up the uh, Hermes light and see if we can hear it on that There you have it working as it should. Okay, Nano VNA is set to a CW frequency. I'm just going to put the uh, mic up near the speaker and we're going to have a listen to see if it receives. So it's receiving. Very nice. Now, I have to say, I am a huge fan of QRP Labs. How he manages to produce the kits he does for the prices that he does is amazing. And also the design of the kits is also really, really inspiring and inspired. Because most of the time, the thing that holds back quite a few home brewers is the lack of test equipment. And he's very mindful of this dilemma for a lot of people. And because of that, a lot of the time the testing actually happens within the design that he's designed. So it's, it is amazing. I would also like to say that he has his own website of experimentation and radio stuff he's, he's done in the past. And that really gives you a, a huge insight into just how passionate he is about RF design. So Hans Summers, we are not worthy. I'll put a link to that website down below. And I will also put a link to QRP Labs. Check it out. And you can never have too many small QRP rigs lying around the shack. Now I've built his QDX. I've destroyed his QCX Mini for 40 meters. I've now built this rig as well. I have his Prog Rock, which is a programmable crystal, which is going to be going into some QRP designs that I'm thinking of. And I also have a high altitude balloon transponder, which is probably the cheapest one that money can buy. And he's got a setup that makes it really, really easy. So once the furor of, you know, Chinese spy balloons has died down a little bit, plan on launching one of those as well. So keep an eye on the channel. It's coming. So QRP Labs makes fantastic transceiver kits and lots of other types of kits the quality is high the price is low and he makes things with cw in mind so if you love cw you cannot afford not to go and have a look at the uh, things that are on offer on the site i have hooked up my new my new old j style american style key i'm looking forward to uh to getting this uh transceiver onto top band really looking forward to it now, I had a quick comment from uh, VK3HN Paul who said CW on top band in Australia is going to be a bit of an ask because there's not much activity. And I think that's most likely correct. So <laughs> probably going to have to beg for someone to, uh, to tune down there and um, try and hear me. But I am going to give it a red hot try. Thank you for sticking around right to the end of the video. It's school holiday time, so I have been in the shack. I'm getting about three hours sleep a night, building kits, playing with Morse keys, just basically having the time of my life, making my better half very upset that I'm not doing any of the stuff I'm supposed to be doing. While the sun shines, we shall make some hay. 7-3, and I will see you in the next episode of the art of engineering. Oh yes, and remember, please, if you like this content, like and subscribe. Bye.